Good morning, good morning, everyone. Welcome from wherever you are coming from, from however you are feeling this morning. I am grateful to be with you in the relative cool than outside, but still in the warmth of the summertime. <laughs> I'm grateful to see your faces, both those who are in person and online. This is a special service of the blessing of the animals and whether or not the animals are with us here or just in our hearts because they're at home, safe in the cool weather, we are grateful for our animal companions in our lives. Therefore, I want to start our service with a special reading found in our hymnal attributed to Chief Noah South called We Belong to the Earth. This we know, the earth does not belong to us. We belong to the earth. This we know, all things are connected like the blood which unites one family. All things are connected. Whatever befalls the earth befalls the siblings of the earth, the children of the earth. We did not weave the web of life. We are merely a strand in it. Whatever we do to the web, we do to ourselves. There ends our opening words this morning. So now, um, if you want to say the words with me for the chalice lighting, we light this chalice in the search for truth and the spirit of love, we unite and worship and fellowship. Second time's a charm. Um, and as an extension, um, so I have to pause after my little joke because this isn't funny at all. Um, as an extension of lighting our chalice, I want to take a moment of silence to light one candle for the names of the victims of the Buffalo shooting. The shooting was an act of terrorism and explicit racism targeted as an act of hate. We value the lives lost and the incredible legacy of love they gave to all who knew them. So we light this candle for the life of Celestine Cheney, age 65, Roberta A. Drury, 32 years old, Andre McNeil, 53, Catherine Macy, 72, Margus D. Morrison, 52, Hayward Patterson, 67, Aaron Salter Jr., 55, Geraldine Taylor, 62, Ruth Whitfield, 86, and Pearl Young, 77. Let us take a moment of silence to reflect on their names. May this light be a symbol of our commitment to continue the work of racial justice and proclaim everywhere that Black Lives Matter. May it be so, and amen. Thank you, Dave. I now invite Kevin to lead us in our opening hymn for this service. Hymn number 203, it's found in your gray hymnal in front of you all creatures of the earth and sky. Thank you so much. Please rise and join in singing. All creatures of the earth and sky, come kindred, lift your voices high. Alleluia, alleluia, bright burning. 
morning sun with golden beam, soft shining moon with silver gleam. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Swift rushing wind so wild and strong, white clouds that sail in heaven along. Alleluia, alleluia. Fair rising morn in praise rejoice. High stars of evening find a voice. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. Cool flowing water, pure and clear, make music for all life to hear. Alleluia, alleluia. Dance flames of fire so strong and bright, and bless us with your warmth and light. Alleluia. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Embracing earth you day by day, bring forth your blessings on our way. Alleluia, Alleluia. All herbs and fruits that richly grow, and the glory also show. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. All you of understanding heart, forgiving others, take your part. Alleluia, Alleluia. Let all things now thus holy bless and worship God in humbleness. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. So now is the time in our service for joys and sorrows. Um, if you're visiting us for the first time, um, this is a time when you can introduce yourself. For those gathering in person, we invite you to raise your hand and then stand where you're seated and speak your joy or sorrow aloud. Emily will give you the microphone to speak in. And we invite you to share what's in your heart. For those joining us online, we invite you to raise your hand and we would direct you to come off mute um, when we're directly, you can come off mute and share with us directly. And we invite you also to share what's in your heart. And I can start since I'm already speaking, if that's cool. No, I thought I'd um, just, so you can all keep Christine Johnson in, in your thoughts and prayers. I mean, not, not, I mean, it doesn't sound like she's sick, but she's having a serious sinus bout. So she would be standing where I'm standing right now. So that's, that's one reason why, um, you know, Jade and the kids didn't plan to come. They're on with, um, uh, Jill, Jill Novensky, who you all met last week, she does, as maybe we mentioned, she does a Zoom with the kids every morning. So they end at 11, so they may be filing in late, but um, they may not. But anyhow, so, but I'm happy to, I'm very happy to be here. And uh, I guess that's all I want to say. I'm really grateful you're here, Dave. Thank you. Anyone who's here, please raise your hand. I'm going to go. Uh, when I call you on Zoom, I will let you know when you can come off mute, okay? All right, Viv. Hi, everybody. My name is Viv. And for the past, I don't know, many months, Mark and I have gone every Sunday to take care of his mother, who's been very ill. And last Sunday, she passed away, surrounded by family, very peacefully. We were there. And so she's gone on to the next step of life. We think she's in heaven. And um, we're grateful that it was a peaceful end and that everyone was with her.
Thank you so much, Viv. My heart is with Mark and with the memory of Mark's mother. What was her name? Barbara. Barbara, may her legacy of love continue on in our hearts. Thank you. Who else would like to share? Kathy, you'd like to share. Hi, my name is Kathy. Um, I'm talking in behalf of the Caring Committee, um, just to let you know that our grand old member, Harry Hicks, is in the hospital. He's been there a couple of days. They're doing testing. So he's in Staten Island University South. And there is a phone number, but uh, he may or may not pick up since sometimes it's out of reach. Um, and uh, yeah, so we're waiting to get test results and see how, how things are going. Um, also, uh, Kate Nielsen is back in Eggers, as you know, so she's still there. And, um, and finally, I heard from Marge Becker, and you know, she's been having all kinds of medical issues, and um, she's still having them. Uh, but her daughter and her daughter's boyfriend are living there, and they're helping her, which is good. Um, she still can't speak too well, so but she does answer emails. So if you want to email her and just send her your thoughts, that would be great. Thank you so much, Kathy, for keeping us abreast of so much that happens in our community. I really appreciate it. Anyone else who'd like to share? I'm going to go to ah, I'm going to go to Kevin, and then Randy, and then you. And then, of course, all of you online. Good news health-wise, so many people are suffering. I had a fractured knee about two months ago, but I saw my orthopedist on Monday and had it x-rayed, and it is healed, and my brace is gone. So rejoice with me. <laughs> Congratulations. Certainly rejoicing. Yes. All right, Randy. Randy, but not a joyous sorrow, an aggravation. I was at a concert Friday at the 92nd Street Y, and uh, I lost my wallet there somehow. So, you know, they're closed for the weekend, their customer service, but uh, I'm going to give them a call on Monday and see if anything was found. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It just, it's one of those things that, you know, you could live without losing your wallet. It would, it would be great if those things don't ever happen. So blessings that you find it. Joy, I happen to have had one credit card in my pocket from the day before. So that was at home. And I had one credit card from the restaurant that evening. So I had that. So I'm glad you weren't completely stranded without access, but good luck in finding it again. Yes, Ben, I saw that you had your hand raised. Thank you. Uh, my name is Benjamin. I say this is a, a joy and a sorrow. Um, last week's uh, service very much connected to me. And um, I'm joyful to have this place and to have the people here. I talked to a couple of people after the service and just got out some personal things that I've been going through. And uh, I, I think that balances out the sorrow, which is um, a lot of times when I'm here during joys and sorrows, I feel like I don't want to bother people with what I'm thinking about. Like, it's not worth it. Um, just, you know, let the session go on and let's get on with it because I don't want to bore you people with my problems. And I really felt like last week I connected with people, I connected with the congregation, and I feel like I, uh, I'm not bothering people with my problems. Uh, you're all helpful and you, you all mean a lot to me. So uh, thank you. Ben, it, it's a lot. It's a lot that 
thank you for sharing that just because it, it takes a level of trust to get that far to share it. Joys and sorrows is a vulnerable time for people to open up. Uh, but it means a lot. You're not a burden. We're here to support each other. That's what we do in community. And it's so great that you're a part of our community. Thank you so much. Anyone else? Yes, Kathy, you just thought of something. I'm sorry, I forgot a very uh, a good news. Uh, Susan Flynn had her knee operation on the 20th and she was home yesterday. I haven't spoken to her today, but she supposedly sent out an email to some of her friends saying she was doing well. I'm glad for her. Any other announcements? All right, I'm gonna go to those who are online. Please feel free to raise a hand. I'm going to just say your name into the ether and you can unmute yourself and let me know if you want to share a joy or sorrow. Sally, I see you're unmuted. Go ahead and share. Well, I just wanted to let you know, Sus I have something to share, but Suzanne has some things to share. So Suzanne, can you unmute? Uh, I don't think I have anything to share. I put it in. Well, okay. So Viv, should I put in what I had in the chat? Yes, please. And Viv and Mark and grandchildren, we are thinking of you and we love you. We've known you for so many years and I'm glad your mother had an easy passing. And Benjamin, we're so glad you're here with us and sharing. I can't see you, you can't see us, but we're here every Sunday. And so we hear what people say and thank you to our wonderful minister. Suzanne, it's so great to have you with us. I really thank you for being part of our services virtually. Anyone else who'd like to share? Sally, do you have something to say? Uh, yeah, I am doing tech, a little tech, not much tech, but a little tech from home because um, we have, my David got COVID and Aww. I hope, and so I thought I'm, I'm still negative, but I hope that, um, uh, you know, that we get through this and that, uh, we can go on our vacation. <laughs> That's our motivation. I really hope you get that vacation. You've been working hard and you both deserve it. So David, rest up, take it easy, be well. I hope this is uh, light symptoms for you in this experience. Yeah. I have a little bit of news myself to share. I found out earlier this week that my grandfather, Delos Detar, passed away. He was 102 surrounded by family, a very peaceful and, and beautiful passing. And I know that I will miss him and I'm grateful for his existence because he was a person who discovered Unitarian Universalism, which makes me third generation UU, which brought me to where I am today. So he's in my heart. Is there anyone else who'd like to share today? Oh, yes. I'm, I'm having trouble with uh, my circulation a little bit, but it's not so bad. And my left knee is a little hurting, you know, for the past month or so. And I'm trying to get off cigarettes and I've, I've tapered down to only one yesterday. So hopefully I'll be able to stop. Thank you. That's great. It's hard to get off cigarettes. So good luck in the journey. And your name is Greta? Greta it's, Greta, it's great to have you with us. Good luck with your circulation and your health. Yes. Hi. Hello, Eric. Welcome. It's good to have you with us. <laughs> Tom, do you want to, I thought I saw a hand. Okay. <laughs> All right, everyone. I'm going to go ahead and invite us into a time of meditation and reflection this morning. Let's go into a moment of silence. The spirit of life, we are grateful to be in community with each other. We are grateful for a place where we can share our joys and sorrows, mindful of the times when maybe we're feeling self-conscious and don't want to unload that this is a place where we share together that we are not a burden, 
but a joy to journey with. We reflect on the sorrows that have been shared in our community, the people who are sick or at the hospital, like Harry Hicks. We think of those who have passed away, like Barbara or like the lost guitar. We think of those who are continuing needing healing and connection. We also share with each other joys, joys of successful knee surgeries, of new opportunities, of fun summer events, of communities and connection, of chances to celebrate. We also hold in our hearts the tragedies of the news cycle, almost unrelenting barrage of new events that continue to happen, whether it is the several mass shootings that have happened in the last two weeks, whether it is the continued strife in our economy or the rise of new laws that continue to put restraints on people with specific body parts or on LGBTQIA plus persons. It is a lot to hold. And even as a minister, I have found it hard to find words in light of such tragedies. And so instead, I invite us to a moment of silent contemplation together on the things of our world and the things in our heart, knowing that sometimes silence can bring more solace in community than words ever could. For all of these things in our hearts and for so much more, we say blessed be and amen. So for our reading this morning, these are excerpts from Robin Wall Kimmerer's Blessing Sweetgrass, Indigenous Wisdom, Scientific Knowledge, and the teachings of plants. This is a combination of phrases from the chapter, Tending Sweetgrass. This is the grammar of animacy. Imagine seeing your grandmother standing at the stove in her apron and then saying of her, look, it is making soup. It has gray hair. We might snicker at such a mistake, but we also recoil from it. In English, we never refer to a member of our family or indeed to any person as it. That would be profound, a, a profound act of disrespect. It robs a person of selfhood and kinship, reducing a person to a mere thing. So it is that in Patuatomi and most other indigenous languages, we use the same words to address the living world as we use for our family, because they are our family. And a little further down the chapter, English doesn't give us many tools for incorporating respect for animacy. In English, you are either a human or a thing. Our grammar boxes us in by the choice of reducing a non-human being to an it, or it must be gendered, inappropriately a he or a she. Where are our words for the simple existence of another living being? Where is our Yahweh, or Y-A-W-E, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, um, the Potawatomi word for I am? Oh because Yahweh in Hebrew is also it's connected to I am. My friend, Michael Nelson, an ethicist, who this is, who, sorry, let me start that over. My friend, Michael Nelson, an ethicist, who this is a great deal about moral inclusion, told me about a woman he knows 
a field biologist whose work is among other, other than humans. Most of her companions are not two-legged, and so her language has shifted to accommodate her relationships. She kneels along the trains to inspect a set of moose tracks, saying, someone's already been this way this morning. Someone is in my hat, she says, shaking a deer fly. Someone, not something. And the last selection of this chapter, the animacy of the world of something we already know, but the language of animacy teeters of extinction, sorry, teeters of, extin <laughs> teeters of extinction, not just for native people, but for everyone. Our toddlers speak of plants and animals as if they were people, extending to themselves intention and compassion until we teach them not to. We quickly retrain them and make them forget. The arrogance of English is that the only way to be animate, to be worthy of respect and moral concern is to be human. Thank you so much, Dave. That was a hard reading, but it was deep and I'm thankful for your reading. I'm gonna start off before I start the sermon. I wanna show you who inspired the sermon. Every year, sometimes I have a little trouble with motivation, but I have a friend who has a cat, a cat named Sherman. To give me motivation for this sermon, a college friend of mine gave me a picture of her cat. And she told me, do this for Sherman. So Sherman, this one's for you. Sherman is my college roommate and close friend, Emily Regenstreif's cat. As you saw, Sherman is an adorable calico with white and orange fur and greenish hazel eyes. He is, and I quote, a big sweetie who wants to couple, cuddle and meet, wants to meet everyone. He's a good people cat. He's very playful and loves his toys. He greets Emily at the door. His favorite TV show is Only Murders in the Building. And he is a very good boy. The sermon may be for Sherman, but it's also for all the living beings we are lucky enough to call pets, whether they're with us or in our hearts. Because our pets teach us this truth that Robin Wall Kimmerer was trying to teach from her native language of Potawatomi. The animals are not objects. They are living, breathing beings worthy of respect, worthy of some level of personhood we do not yet have language for in our English language. And anyone who has pets or even lives in nature can see the ways that our other than human neighbors live out the beauty and soul of their lives. Our pets have personalities, they have feelings, they have entirely different thoughts and imaginations. We can watch them dream. We can watch them care. We see different kinds of families. We see different kinds of socializing or internal thought processes. We see different habits of eating, different expressions of play and sadness. We know of other species who mourn together or even pray together as a new article discovered among ele elephants lately. We know of species who laugh like foxes or who sing like birds or animal companions who grieve and celebrate like crows who swell with joy and cry with sadness. The love of animals and the love of our pets is palpable and real. It's not something imagined. And many of us would have not gotten through the hard isolated years of this pandemic without them because we mourn for them and they mourn for us. We play with them and they play with us. We eat with them and they share with us. We live together. It may seem obvious, but I find it important to try and remember our ability to name plants and animals as living beings and not as objects. 
especially in the world as it is today. And this is for many reasons. First, the ways we've dominated and cultivated and extracted the natural resources of our world and ecosystems that have created climate crises of our present reality. I think actually it was either Eric or John who for Santa Claus wished about our ecosystems and our waters and the ways that we didn't care for the world. We can see the ways that we're impacting our planet continue to hurt ourselves and others because we imagine the earth as a thing instead of a living being. Second, our history and even the stories, stories like those of religious texts tell a narrative of exploitation of the earth that perpetuate thinghood instead of being. And finally, as we've seen through history and in our living current reality, instead of when we treat animals like objects, it can so easily and immediately cross over into the ways we treat other humans as objects. I'm gonna be treading a difficult line here, so I'm gonna ask your permission as I carefully go through this. See, we see the ways that news pundits, uh, ways that various political leaders or people like Tucker Carlson have compared particular human beings to animals. There's this direct line of object in the speech when we call people beasts or animals, as if Comparing humans to animals then turns them into objects, into things, into something else, something that's not a being. I sometimes wonder what would happen if we lived in a world where animals were given or seen with dignity because that line of logic wouldn't work then. The objectification of other humans wouldn't work quite the same if we didn't have the starting line of treating living things in the world as if they are to be dominated, exploited, and traded for monetary gain. The logic of exploitation wouldn't be able to exist in the same way if every living being was treated as if it was sacred and holy, right? I am not trying to say that animals deserve the same rights as other humans, that plays into another kind of white supremacy and racism. But I am trying to say that they're all connected. That the ways our Western culture dominates our environment and our world, the ways we exploit other species, affects the ways we treat other human beings too, especially in this country, and especially in the ways this country has treated Black and Indigenous people. After watching the tragedies of the last few weeks, we've seen this continued domination or control of other people, either in our nation's laws or by acts of terrorism and violence. We've seen the way this logic plays out in terrible and horrifying ways. So as Unitarian Universalists, we have to say something different about how we value life. We believe in the inherent worth and dignity of every human being. We must continue to say that. We must continue to say that Black Lives Matter. And we must go a step further to claim that living beings deserve some respect too. That those things that are living have worth not only because of how they're owned, or treated to serve human beings or exploited for monetary wealth, but because life itself, the very nature of life, the mystery and the wonder and the joy of consciousness, our ecosystem is holy, is worthy of life. We live in a fragile world, a world where people exploit other people and other living things. And sometimes having animals in our lives helps remind us as a species of what it means to be human. Sometimes on the days when the news cycle is too much for those who own pets, it is our pets that teach us of love. It is our pets that teach us of rest, of the wonders of life. It is nature 
the winds and the trees and the grass we stand on that reminds us of our very soul, of the mystery and wonder of this life. How can we not call life holy, beautiful, wondrous? How can we not claim these living beings, these ecosystems we're part of as part of our family across species? I know that Sherman the cat, the beloved cat of my friend Emily, helps her when she is overwhelmed by the world. His demand for cuddles, his ready greetings at the door reminds her of just how loved she is, of just how much this world is in sore need of that love. Sherman blesses her with this patience and presence every day because just like Robin Wall Kimmerer said, they are our family. So though we may not have animal companions here with us in person, I want to have us together offer our beloved animal companions a blessing today. A blessing so we can remember the worth and dignity of humans, yes, and living beings who remind us of that humanity, who are part of our families. So you will see, I don't know if all of you've gotten, there's an insert at the back that went with the order of service that contains a blessing, a blessings or words for animals. Uh, and this is the blessing I want to offer with you today. I'm gonna go around and ask you what uh, animals or pets that you'd like to have blessed. But for right now, I want to bless the cat that inspired it all, Sherman. Sherman, we bless you with our love and respect, remembering our place in the family of things. So I'm gonna go around, I'm gonna have you raise your hand and together we'll say that phrase together as we bless the animals and pets we want to as a congregation. And for those online, I'm going to have you join us at the end, and I'll also ask you to say aloud the names of animal companions you'd like to bless today. Okay. Who would like to bless? I need to insert myself. My goodness. Sorry. I'll say it with you. What's the name of the pet? Yes. Gina. <laughs> Gina the cat, it, what kind of cat is she? Orange, brown, tortoise shell. A 16 year old cat. What blessings? Well, for you, Gina, we bless you with the love and respect, remembering our place in the family of things. Yes, Juliet. My 17 year old cat, Squeaky. He's at home uh, laying in front of the fan. <laughs> to Squeaky, the 17-year-old cat laying in front of the fan, we bless you with our love and respect, remembering our place in a family of things. Yes, Dave? So this might be unorthodox, but um, that's what Unitarians do, right? We don't, we don't have pets, but we've named the, the robins and the, um, the cardinals that come, that, that feed from our... That's delightful. So it's, there's a there's Chippy, Red, Mini Chip. Those are the fat cardinal family. And then Bert is the robin. And then there's a host of other sparrows and squirrels that we haven't named. Except we well, we, we named one of the squirrel, squirrels Squirrely. But um, <laughs> yeah, so yeah. So for Squirrely, for Chirp, for Mini Chip, Chippy, Mini Chip, Red, and Bert, and so many of the other sparrows and squirrels. We bless you with our love and respect, remembering our place in the family of things. Yes, Kathy, one second. Well, Tom and I don't have any pets currently, um, but we have quite a menagerie of fur grandbabies. So let me see. There's Marshmallow and Matrix in Phoenix. There's Annabelle, Wes, and Wedge in Rawway. 
and there's Livy and Stardust in Vancouver. Sadly, not going to remember that whole name, list of names, but we are so excited to think about the fur babies and together we say, we bless you with our love and respect, remembering our place in the family of things. Hi. Nala, oh, look at this gorgeous cat. How old is she? She, three, about three, you rescued her. She's a gray, a uh, grayish cat with kind of striped patterns. A tiger, a little tiger. Oh, that's beautiful. So together we say, we bless you with our love and respect, remembering our place in the family of things. Thank you. Anyone else? I see Kevin has his hand up. Yes, Kevin. We have a cat named Spike. Yes. A cat named Spikey. How does, what does Spikey look like? Black cat, yes. A tuxedo cat, I love tuxedo cats. How fancy, the fancy tuxedo cat. So together we say, we bless you with our love and respect, remembering our place in the family of things. Anyone else? All right, so for those of you who are online, I'm going to have you raise your hand and unmute yourself. <gasps> Sally, I see you, one second. One second, I'm gonna go ahead and pin pin you so people can see you hello who is this this is marigold she's marigold. she's 15 years old she's um not doing you know she's kind of at the her her end of life i think we don't know <laughs> but she's 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 a cutie and she was a feral cat who uh doesn't like dogs <laughs> a feral cat who doesn't like dogs well we bless you with our love and respect, remembering our place in the family of things. Thank you, Sally. <laughs> and who else may have a pet who's joining us online? I don't know, Virginia doesn't look like you're here. Don Walker, I'm gonna check in the chat box. Virginia, I see you. Do you have a, a pet in mind? No, I don't have any pets right now, but I've had them in the past. Well, for all the pets that you've had in the past, we say we bless you with our love and respect, remembering our place in the family of things. Thank right. you so much. Okay, everyone. I also wanna take a moment in case there are any pets who have been lost recently who you'd like to lift up and name in this moment. Yes, Dave. I'll lift up when I was growing up, you know, living with my 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 parents, my sister went away to college. And um, so we had this cat Ringo that um, was kind of like, you know, he'd sleep in my bed because my sister was away and my parents, I guess, didn't want a cat in their bed. So he really, you know, he's my friend. And, and so this is, I feel like I'm inspired to share the story if it's okay. Um, so, and my parent, my, my, well, my family knows the story, but so he was an outdoor cat. I know these days, like, that's not cool. But back then, I don't know, we didn't think it wasn't cool. So he was an outdoor cat. And um, so, you know, cats get old, they stand by the door, and then they, you know, you, you open the door and they and they leave, and I guess they go off and die. But so after that happened, I had this like vivid dream that it was one of the most vivid dreams of my life where Ringo was there with all like, so colorful, like Technicolor, and he brushed up against my leg that cats do and, and walked away. And if that wasn't like crazy enough, like years later, I saw the movie Coco, was that the movie? You, you, you know how all the spirit animals look like that bright color? Like that movie came out after this experience. So I feel like the people who made that movie, someone must have had a similar experience, right? So it must be true, right? So, so anyway, and then if I'm mentioning Ringo, I feel like I need to also mention Polly, who we also had um, when we were young and Attila. So those three cats from my youth. Holly, Attila, and Ringo, we're so thankful for the ways that you've been with Dave. We bless you with our love and respect, remembering our place 
in the family of things. Thank you, Dave, for sharing. One last ask around. One second while I grab something. All right, then I'm going to ask us together and those who are online to join us in our community blessing as we end the segment of our service together. These are words adapted by Reverend Karen Johnson, uh, adapted by me, but they are from Reverend Karen Johnson. Ours is a world alive and allowed with the presence of creatures and critters. Some of us have known animals who have saved our very lives. For so many of us, we are better human animals because we have known animal animals as part of our story. Animals abound, interwoven in our human lives and wholly independent. This is the interdependent web of all existence of which we are a part. So together we say, we bless all animals. We bless those we know and love. We bless those unknown to us who have benefited our lives. We bless even the ones that can harm us, affirming with humility their place in the interdependent web. We affirm the impulse for humans to live in right relation with all other animals on this earth. May we honor our best presence as part of the animal family. May it be so. Thank you. Now is the operatory. We invite you to give after service with the plates on either end. Or for those online, please look to the links in your chat. If I could talk to the animals, just imagine it chatting in a chimp to chimpanzee. Imagine talking to a tiger chatting with a cheetah what a want a dream that that would be if i could talk to the animals learn their languages maybe take an animal degree study elephant and eagle buffalo and beagle alligator guinea pig and flea if i could verse in the polar bear and python and I would curse in the finest kangaroo. If people asked me, can you speak rhinoceros? I'd say, of course, Rus, can't you? If I conferred with thy furry friends, man to animal, think of the amazing repertoire. If I could walk with the animals, talk with the animals, grunt and squeak and squawk with the animals and they could talk to me if i could talk to the animals think what fun i'd have asking over crocodiles for tea or maybe lunch with two three or lines walruses and sea lions what a lonely place the world would be if I spoke slang to orangutans. The advantages any fine of earth could plainly see. Discussing savages and dismals with the infinitesimals. That's a big step forward, you'll agree. If I could learn to speak an antelope. My Pekingese would be extremely good if I were asked to sing in hippopotamus. I'd say white animus and good if I could parlay with pachyderms. It's a fairy tale worthy of Hans Anderson or Grimm, the man who walks with the animals talks with the animals, grunts and squeaks and squawks with the animals, and they could talk to me. I'd study every living creature's language so I could speak to all of them on site. 
If Fred say, can you talk in crab or pelican? You'd say like hell he can, and you'd be right. And if you just stop to think of it, there's no doubt of it. I will have a place in history, for I can walk with the cats and dogs, talk with the toads and frogs, rant and squeak and squawk with the pigs and hogs, and they can squeak and squawk and speak and talk to me. Thank you, Kevin, and stay right there because we're going to be singing together in our hymnal 175, which is we celebrate the web of life. Please stand and sing out with enthusiasm. We celebrate the web of life, the magnitude we sing. For we can see divinity in every living thing. A fragment of the perfect whole in cactus and in quail. As much in tiny barnacle as in the great blue whale. Of ancient dreams we are the moons that here grinds on to star. And bind our future worlds to come with worlds that were and are. Respect the water, land, and air, which gave all creatures birth. Protect the lives of all that share the glory of the I invite you to join me in extinguishing the chalice. Um, please say it with me if you know the words. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. For these we keep in our, carry in our hearts until we are together again. Robin Wall Kimmerer says, the arrogance of English is that the only way to be animate is to be to be worthy of respect and moral concern is to be human. May we forswear this arrogance in our language and in our culture. May we act in ways that grant to every human person the dignity and worth they carry, just as we give to all living beings dignity of life too. May we value the whole ecosystem's worth of fellow living companions and continue to bless the animals in our midst so that one day, we can live in a world where we truly live into the harmony and beauty that all living species deserve. May it be so, and amen. <laughs>